Good morning. Happy Saturday. Uh, just popping in here after um, running some fun errands. We went to a flea market this morning down on uh, Route 33 in Sailorsburg, and that was kind of fun. Um, was able to support small business owners down there. Um, but anyway, this is about um, a bit of uh, the DAC, the DAC issue and questions concerning people who may be eligible for DAC has been coming up quite a bit lately. So we have a few videos on different aspects of it, but I just wanted to drive home the, the basics of it. If there is a child who could be now be an adult of any age, and if it is provable that that now adult child was disabled before the age of 22, now that doesn't mean he was collecting any benefits before the age of 22. It might be that he was disabled as a baby, toddler, elementary school, high schooler, but was not eligible for benefits because number one, social security disability um, stems from one's work record and he wouldn't have had one because it doesn't apply until people are over 18. Um, and if he was unable to work, he'd never have gained it. Um, and secondly, that if his parents or guardians um, were not poor enough, then because their income and assets, resources to some degree is deemed to him, the child, that child, despite being disabled, would not be eligible for SSI. If the child was from a, a, um, a family income and resource level that was beneath the maximum for SSI, then he would be able to have gotten SSI, and maybe he did as a child. And then, of course, when you hit 18, they now review the child um, on the basis of being an adult. So it's a slightly different, um, well, not even just slightly, a quite a significant difference in the evaluation of whether they're disabled. Because now as, as an 18 year old, it's are you disabled from all work, which is a different standard than childhood disability. So anyway, so either the child was getting SSI or the child was not getting SSI. And now the child is an adult um, and there is a benefit that one may be able to get at some point in adulthood, if that's the if that's the case, based on a parent's work record. So if that a now adult child is disabled and has been since before age 22 without um, interruption, then if a if and when a parent is either eligible for social security on his or her own record, such as disability, retirement, um, or if the parent passes away and a survivor benefit for anyone eligible would kick in, that adult child who has no work record of his or her own can now get what is called a DAC benefit, disabled adult child benefit. Um, and that would be a percentage of of the parent's um, primary insurance amount. So if the parent is still alive, it would be 50%. If the parent is deceased, it would be 75%. Um, subject, of course, to the family max, which we won't get into here. Um, so it's really, really important. And I have another video on what parents of disabled minor children or or a little bit older, maybe even 18 to, you know, even in early 20s, get all that evidence now and squirrel it away in a safe spot. Um, I would be getting all of the school records because those will oftentimes show a childhood um, if there was a, if the if the disability stemmed from the young years. Um, sometimes people are born with a disability that's of quite a uh, quite substance. Um, other times it's something that occurs during the childhood years or the young adult years before age twenty two. But parents, you have to um, save that evidence now, even though it might not be where they could get a DAC benefit until uh, they're 40. Um, it really depends on when you will be filing for disability or retirement or God forbid, pass away. But if you don't have the evidence gathered now, there's a very good chance that evidence is going to disappear. Medical providers have this uncanny habit of disappearing records after seven years. Um, and this is true even with digital records, if the person is no longer a patient of that practice. Um, and of course, every state has different rules, if any rules on how long they have to have to keep them versus might want to keep them. So it's the onus is on you to gather those records, order those records, 
and keep them in a safe spot. I would, you know, maybe you're going to have a keep, keep a paper copy, but maybe have multiple cloud copies, maybe um, a couple thumb drives in the cloud, you know, some sort of, um, you know, commercial cloud service because you're, and then let your, your child or whoever, if they have a guardian know where that is, because when the time comes, when that child can now have a benefit, um, they'll be able to prove it because it's, it's, it's proving a past fact. A lot of times it could be proving something from 20 years ago. Okay. Um, and a lot of the time, a child that could not get, say, SSI as a minor because of the parents had too much money, um, once they turn 18, assuming no parent has, you know, started them a big bank account, and you really, you really need to plan plan not to do that. It should be all um, in special, perhaps trust accounts that would not interfere with the child's ability to get certain um, eligibilities uh, once they're 18. So once they are 18, they might be on SSI because then they prove, you know, if they're, if the, the child now is not getting deemed the monies from the parents, once you're 18 as a child, the parents' income and, and resources isn't going to count for the child, which is great because that's why most can get on SSI unless someone wasn't thinking and let them inherit a bunch of money that was free for them to use in any way they want, in which case they're not poor and they wouldn't get SSI because that's welfare, right? But for most people have this kind of all in mind and the child now at 18 would be on SSI. The the um, the child will remain on SSI unless and until, you know, he, he recovers, starts to work too much, SGA, you've got to read up on that. Um, and then at some point would we'll potentially flip over to DAC, disabled adult child benefits once a parent's record kicks in for him. Um, and presuming that that DAC benefit would be more than the SSI payment. Um, DAC folks, like all other disabled folks, can work, but they have to stick within the rules of the amounts. And of course, the work they do, you don't want that to be indicative of being able to work full time at something else or the same job. So you always want to make sure you, you have get some good information about that with regard to the child, or if you are the child now, um, before you start working, be very careful. One thing to know about DAC, now it's, I like, I think it's better than SSI um, because you don't have the thumb as firmly on your neck uh, as you do with SSI. However, there's one big thing that people have to realize as a DAC recipient, um, well, actually, there's two things. One is you generally cannot get married, similar to SSI, in that you can get married. And of course, you can get married, but it's going to potentially affect your benefits. With SSI, the income or resources of the spouse will now be deemed to the disabled person that's on SSI. Because when we're married, we are financially responsible for each other. Um, with DAC, you can't get married or else you will lose your DAC benefits unless the beneficiary, I'm sorry, the person you marry is also a DAC recipient. There's been a lot of efforts um, to try to get that changed in some way because it just seems very um, inhibitive, inhibited, inhibitive. Um, so we'll see what happens with that in the coming years, but just remember the marriage thing with DAC is a serious, a serious thing to consider um, like it is with SSI. And the other thing with DAC is if you are working part time and under the under the threshold, so the working is fine as a DAC adult. So you have your working income that's very part time, and you have your DAC benefits, and that makes for a much nicer life. Um, in in various respects, you have more money, you have a better quality of living because you have more money, and you get out and about, and you're productive, and and it's all fine and dandy. Um, be very 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 careful about SGA because. If you go over SGA and you um, lose your DAC benefits, even if you then go under SGA and you no longer can work again, maybe your disabilities get worse, you can't go back to DAC. It's, it's like once it gets cut off, it's like permanently cut off. I'm not sure I understand why that is. I, I kind of understand some of it, but I, I think there's some exceptions that it's, it's very unfortunate. Um, so you want to be very careful never to lose your DAC if you're going to be relying on your DAC. Now, one beautiful thing about working part-time when you're receiving DAC is that you're going to start getting those credits 
that might get you your own social security disability uh, insured status because now you have your own work record. Even though it's very part-time and under SGA, you could still earn those credits. So a DAC person might eventually get off of DAC and collect their own benefits. Um, obviously they're not going to do that if their DAC benefits are more, right? So it really depends on how much they're working and how much the parent works so that their percentage that they're getting under DAC and how much that is, it, it'll be compared to now, but, but just something to think about. Um, but, but the big take home here is DAC, you have to be careful about your love life. You can't just go and get married without giving it a lot of thought and making sure whether you're willing to get off DAC and you're not going to go back on or, um, your, your beloved is also a DAC recipient. Okay. So take that home. And, uh, as things crop up with DAC, I'm going to try to make a little short video about it because it seems like a lot of people are interested, um, in the, the ins and outs of DAC, because there's a lot of people who, you know, are eligible for DAC because their parents worked hard to buy that insurance, um, which is a wonderful thing. DAC is great. I love it. Okay. Bye for now. Have a great weekend. Go to a flea market. <laughs> it's very patriotic, these flea markets. All right. Bye-bye now.